Mendelevium, like Rutherfordium, which was covered in episode 3, is a transuranic element. That means that it's heavier than uranium and exists on Earth in a purely man-made fashion. In particular, it was first made by Glenn Seaborg at the University of California, Berkeley, in 1955, but given he was involved in discovering ten elements, there'll probably be a bit more about him later on. Mendelevium is named after the Russian chemist Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev, who to me should probably be the chemistry equivalent of Einstein or Darwin, because he's the man generally credited with the creation of the periodic table. In my admittedly small amount of research, there seems to be conflicting stories, or at least parts, of certain stories that do not appear in all the sources I've looked at, but I've built what I consider to be the most interesting story, without any obvious contradictions from any of the other sources. Born in 1834, the youngest of somewhere between 11 and 17 children, Mendeleev's father was a teacher of the fine arts, politics and philosophy. He ever lost, lost both his sight and teaching position, forcing Mendeleev's mother to work and reopen the abandoned gl family glass factory in Siberia, where Mendeleev spent most of his childhood. By the age of 13, Mendeleev's father had died and the glass factory was destroyed in a fire. This led his mother to to take him to Moscow, riding 1,200 miles through the Urals on horseback to find a school for him. Having been rejected there, they rode a further 400 miles to St. Petersburg, where he was accepted. His mother died shortly afterwards. Mendeleev completed his PhD with the title On the Combinations of Water and Alcohol, which sounds incredibly dull, but will be mentioned later, before becoming a professor at the university. Between 1868 and 1870, he wrote his seminal work, The Principles of Chemistry, in which he produced his first periodic table. He wanted to have a table of the known elements, of which there were around 60 at the time, to help better explain certain ch chemical phenomena. The obvious starting point was to list all elements by their atomic weights, and this had been done before, but the real intelligence was also taking into account the similar chemical properties he had observed whilst working in the lab. He determined that similar properties were seen in elements either of similar mass, for example platinum, iridium and osmium, or by periodic differences in their masses, such as potassium, rubidium and cesium. These are similar to the triads that was mentioned in the last episode. This allowed him to plot holes in the table for new elements to be discovered. He received some criticism for these holes, but two elements he predicted, Eka aluminium and Eka silicon, now known to us as gallium and germanium, were found in 1875 and 1886 respectively. Ultimately, out of ten predicted holes, seven were filled. Mendeleev was not the first man to come up with the concept of periodicity or the idea of being able to arrange the elements in a table, but he was the first to use his creation to predict holes and that is one of the biggest reasons he gets the credit. Mendeleev's first table looked very different to what is hanging on chemistry classrooms all over the world now. Most obviously, it's rotated by 90 degrees, but that's only really a style issue. Major differences are the lack of noble gases, which were only discovered in the 1890s, the misplacement of uranium, which wasn't put in its proper place until the 1940s, and the confusion caused by the lanthanides that can be seen at the bottom. His second table in 1871 improved a lot and hinted at the lanthanides being separate, but this still took a long time to complete. Mendeleev also worked in other areas. He worked on petroleum, helping to set up the first oil refiner in Russia. And remember that PhD thesis? Well, it was put to good use when Mendeleev was made director of the Bureau of Weights and Measures, where he set the Russian standard for vodka of two parts alcohol to three parts water. He also had an interesting personal life, with the Russian Orthodox Church claiming he would be committing bigamy when he attempted to marry a friend of his niece, to which the Tsar of Russia is thought to have replied, Mendeleev may have two wives, but I have have only one Mendeleev. Shockingly, Mendeleev never received the Nobel Prize, being nominated to the prize committee in both 1906 and 1907, where his chances were dashed by friends of the Swedish chemist Arrhenius, who apparently held a grudge against Mendeleev for criticism of his work. It's perhaps worth noting that whilst Arrhenius does have a Nobel Prize, he does not have an element named in his honour. Mendeleev died in 1907, and whilst not all of his work had been correct, he had claimed that there would be an element coronium, for example, that was lighter than hydrogen, he certainly left the world of chemistry changed forever.